All right, fellas, let's go to the players that are already on the roster. Let's play a little game of cut them or keep them. So to everybody in the chat, once again, cut them or keep them. All right, the first slate, man, we have, uh, you know, some of the key contributors to this to this season's run to make the playoffs, man. You have D. Rose, Taj Gibson, who came off the streets, gave us some some good minutes a, as a backup five. Nerlens Noel, we all know what Nerlens did. The Nerlens Wall coming in for Mitchell Robinson. Reggie Bullock, a mainstay in the starting lineup, 41% from three. We know the chemistry that he and Julius Randle had. You had Alec Burks, who came off the bench, and, and he was a gun, you know, multifaceted guy for us, and obviously you have Derrick Rose, man, whose trade really put this team on a trajectory to, to make the playoffs and the four seed. Uh, CK, I'll start with you, man. Cut them or keep them. Uh, who are you looking to bring back out of this group, and and who do you who would you uh, let go? Um, there's one name for sure that is at the top of my list, and I think it's going to be the common denominator between all of us, and that's Derrick Rose, because yeah. when we talk about impact. Uh, to this team's performance this season, Derrick Rose was at the very tippy top of that list, especially with this list of guys. I mean, so much so that, you know, a lot of, a lot of eyes, especially outside of the Knicks, maybe inside of the Knicks as well. Derrick Rose is probably our best, second best player on this team, you know. Yeah. Um, so to me, it, it, I feel like it's very vital, very important for us to make sure that we go and try and get Derrick Rose. It, you know, if the rumors are true that he's trying to go back home, um, you know, we try and fight. If it happens, it happens. But yeah. he's definitely the number one guy I'm looking at on this list. Um, I'm holding hope on Taj, but I don't know if I'm going to keep him. So I'm going to probably cut him. Uh, Nerlens, I think, is going to be going for the bag. I've been yeah. saying that since the midseason. And to be real, uh, I, we're probably going to be talking about guys that we're looking at in free agency later on the show. So I, I have a guy that I feel like I would rather spend that money on um, later on. So I'll cut Nerlens, even though I love this Nerlens signing. So I know Nerlens, you got to go. Reggie and Alec Burks. To be real with you, these two are interchangeable to me because I love the defense from Reggie. But then, yeah. you know, with this Quentin Grimes draft pick, you hope that he is – he plays well enough in summer league. He does well enough in the training camp that you want to, uh, that you, maybe he could fill that role, be that guy off the, off the rip rookie season, be that um, a three and D guy for us, show us the athleticism that he's been trying to show off since we drafted him as well. So you, you kind of feel like he can fit, you can feel what we'd be losing with Reggie Bullock. Um, and I know you probably agree with me on this one, CP. It's just hard to just let Alec Burke go, man. Yo, that's my it's guy, really man. That, that's yeah. my guy, bro. I, you know, yeah. hard, hard for me to see him walk, but I think the Knicks have some other options that they want to yeah. go to in terms of his, it being his replacement. But I, I thought Burks gave us a, a huge lift, man. I, I yeah. thought he gave us so, a huge so, lift. So, long, so I just want to talk about all of them, but long answer short, to be real, the real only one that I'm really, really trying to keep is definitely Derrick Rose. I'm trying to look to hope that we can bring him back um, you know, hopefully we can figure out this point guard situation uh, this week and have Derrick Rose be able to um, play in his steady 25 to 28 minute role. Um, and really, that's the only one on this list that I'm yeah. looking at trying to bring back. And and the rumors are that uh, he could be headed for a Chicago reunion. So yeah. uh, it would be good for the Bulls, but pretty bad for the Knicks, given our options right now. Al, what do you think, man? Cut him or keep him in this group? <clears throat> well, first of all, shameless plug for me because go to nicksfantv.com and I did cover this Let's way go. before. Yes. But <laughs> that's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> sure did. Sure did. Um, but uh, if we're going to talk about cut him or keep him, Derek Rose, as CK said, he is by far the first guy that has to be kept because we're going to have to address the point guard issue at some point, and we can't lose him because the point guard then is just back to square one we had for the last. 20 years, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the exactly. best that we've had before that was Jason Kidd and Raymond Felton. And we don't have anything close to that even on this team. So we need to make sure we can get Derrick Rose back. I know there's been talks about the Clippers. I know the Bulls are for right now because he can go have a homecoming. But hopefully, you know, he wants to hopefully he wants to stay with Tibbs. Hopefully he likes what he did here because he was so impactful here. He created a home here. The fan base just really was able to get behind him with his second stint. Derrick Rose is by far the number one I want to keep. I think the second one I want to keep is Taj Gibson just for that veteran presence on the bench. Mm. Not necessarily having him back out there like on the court again. I think we got right. something from Taj that was just whitening in the bottle. He found the fountain of youth. I wish he could tell us all where it is because this man <laughs> had these are ready to go. Yeah. He's getting some putbacks. He was just doing everything he wanted to do. Also, he just plays the game you know, like a true pro the right way, gives you the hard, gritty minutes that you want, get sent you the screens, getting the tough rebounds, boxing people out, doing the stuff to really, you know, help grow like the next center, whether it's Mitchell Robinson or Jericho Sims, like just guiding them along the way, how to yeah. be a proper big 
And so I'd like Tosh to still be on here. Also, he can he's that that guy who can help uh, Thibodeau be that connection to the youth and to the players as well. I feel like he can be the extension of the coach that coaches do need on the team. Nero Zilla, I would love to keep him. I think he's gone. I think he's just, mm-hmm. you know, anchoring one of the top five defenses in the NBA. Other teams saw that center is a need for others. And I think he's going to get the bag. And I think he Me also too. wants the bag. I think he wants to be secured, uh, you know, for, for his family and so forth. So I don't see him coming back as much as I would love for him to come back. Reggie Bullock, Alec Burks, CK said, these two are interchangeable. When I wrote it, I had Reggie Bullock over Alec Burks just because we saw how important Reggie Bullock was to Tom Thibodeau. We saw as soon as he came back from injury, Tibbs was like, you're going back in the starting rotation. I don't care if you got to work things out. We need you at the wing out there to begin with. He gave, he shot over 40% from three. He was especially hot from after the all-star break and really gave us good minutes between that part of the season. Sure, he didn't show up really in the playoffs, but still he provided something that we needed, which is just adequate shooting because we didn't have enough adequate shooting yeah. in that starting lineup. But CK also noted it. We got Quentin Grimes. I'm not saying he's going to start, but he kind of fits that same role that you would want from Reggie Bullock right now. And mm. depending on how I would say, depending on how summer league goes, it would make that decision, but we're going to have free agency before summer league. So this is going to be a, a tough situation between him and Burks. I like Burks's versatility mm. offensively, just being an isolation scorer and just being able to give us a bucket. That is more important than just being a spot of three point shooter. Cause you can also get that from Burks, but then I, the question is who do we have on the team that can replace Reggie Bullock if we're not if we if, if Quentin Grimes is not ready to do that so yeah. that this is where it gets really tough but I would rather have personally I'd rather have Burks just for the isolation scoring because even during the playoff series we saw even for one game he was able to come alive and give us the, the points necessary just to keep yeah. us help us stay alive in that series so I would take Agreed. Burks over Bullock because I think you can get that wing I think you can even still throw Grimes in the starting lineup and just hope something happens because he shot 40 percent in college I think it can quasi translate into the NBA. Maybe he doesn't shoot 40%. Maybe he comes in shooting 34, 35, but it's still respectable where it's close to league averages. So I would choose Burks over there. And then is that, is that it? Because, yeah, for uh, this, just, say, just for this okay, slate, okay. just, just for this page, okay, okay. Uh, JD, you go ahead with yours. See, I may be in the, in the minority. I don't think Noel's getting the bag. You don't think so? I, I think he I might, man. I think there was, there was a report out there is. today that said, uh, Sacramento, Detroit, and I believe Golden State right now are, are interested. You see, you mentioned two teams there, Sacramento and Detroit. You know, those type of teams, um, you know, they could, I guess, they have the uh, the ability to take that type of risk. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, those are markets and teams at this point that they're not going to attract big free agents. Um, they may have to overpay for certain players. He may be a candidate that they overpay. But I just don't. I don't know. I just I just think that you saw in the postseason, he averaged less than a block in the postseason. And if you really look at his play, statistically, he didn't improve much other than average 0.7 more blocks. He averaged 2.2 blocks per game last year with the Knicks, 1.5 with OKC. With OKC, he averaged seven points with the Knicks. He averaged five. He got four or five more minutes with the Knicks. I just think that he was part of a great story with the Knicks. It's a New York market. His play got more exposure. He had he got the opportunity to start. He was with Tom Thibodeau. I think everything just worked for him. And I think he's the type of player that other other organizations would be careful about offering big money because is he a system player? Is he a player that played this well just because he was in the right culture, the right system with the right coach? We don't know if he would be able to play as well as he did in the season you know, with another team that has a different type of offense and different type of system. Not everybody is Tom Thibodeau. So, you know, I don't think, I mean, whatever the bag means, I I don't know what that would entail in money. I don't think he's going to get a long-term deal. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I don't think he's going to get a long-term deal. And because of that, I wouldn't rule out him returning to the Knicks on a cheaper offer, cheaper deal. Um, I think it's unlikely, but I wouldn't rule it out. Um, because I just think he fits. If you look at who we drafted, Jericho Sims, there's no offensive game in his repertoire at this point. Um, it could be an indication that in Tom Thibodeau's system, he just doesn't, there isn't just an emphasis on that center position having a big time offensive game. Um, and who knows if, you know, the Knicks will pivot from that strategy. Uh, so I think it's unlikely. 
the guy that I would keep the most out of this group is yeah. Derrick Rose. Yeah. Um, only because we just don't know what's going to happen in free agency. You already see rumors of Larry going somewhere, Lonzo going somewhere. CP, the list starts to dwindle quickly. Yeah. So, yeah and it's, so, not, it's not a great class. It's not a great class. <laughs> it's Exactly. It's not a great class. And for you're going to invest in a point guy that you don't know exactly what you're going to get once he comes to this market. You have a player here that has been in New York twice already, is with a coach he feels comfortable with, was our best player in the playoffs. The Knicks were 24 and 11 in games that Derrick Rose played this year. So if there's any evidence, it tells you that when Derrick Rose plays and he's healthy, the Knicks win. The Knicks win games. Yeah. So I think you try to bring him back. Is that a reason why they're trying to save every dollar? Maybe try to squeeze in a Derrick Rose with whatever plans they have. We will see. Um, he shot 47% in the playoffs, 47% from three as well, um, from the field goal overall and from three. I think Derrick Rose is the easy answer. Um, I will be careful about how many years I would offer him, but you got to try to bring him back because, as we we talked about, the Knicks have – the Knicks, fairly or unfairly, are going into next season with high expectations. Yep. So nobody's trying to hear rebuild. That doesn't mean that they have to spend all their money, but we need to continue to ascend. And you you look at the roster now, we have half, we have like what six players under contract. We got to bring some of these guys back. You would think if the Knicks are gonna have a quiet offseason, somebody has to come back. And yeah. from this list, I would say uh Derrick Rose. And between Bullock and Burks. I think the Knicks have different plans, just like they did in a draft. In other words, I think the Knicks have a plan laid out. If we get these players, this is th- these are the mm-hmm. players we bring back. Mm-hmm. If we get this player, these are the players we bring back. Because I think Burks and Bullock are bring two different things to the court. Um, Burks being more of a playmaker, Bullock being more of a spot-up shooter and defender. Um, so I think it just depends on how the offseason plays out. And yeah, I would just say Derrick Rose and the rest, I think, is just going to be dependent on how the offseason goes. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys who uh, leave us your comments in the chat of these five guys that we just named. Rose, Gibson, Nerlens, Reggie, Burks. Who would you cut? Who would you keep? Leave us some comments in the chat. For me, again, I'm starting with Rose. You have to keep. And, And again, with the rumors of Chicago being interested, could cost the Knicks. We'll see what his motivation is. Obviously, home is home. Tibbs is Tibbs. Uh, you know, I'm sure his hands could be tied there if, if the if the rumored interest and reunion is true. But he's a guy that that we need. There's no doubt about it. With the with the free agent class being so slim, our point guard options right now and the roster being very slim. Even though we have a lot of point guards, you know, quote unquote on the depth chart, they're all young guys, all unproven, and and we need that veteran. We saw what the impact that he had on this team as as soon as he came here. That first game in Miami, they were clicking on all cylinders. Uh, a scoring threat, a shot creator, a guy that can take pressure off of Julius and RJ. Very important. Um, certain games that stuck out to me, the game. Against against the Pelicans at home when he found Bullock in the corner for the corner three to put the game in overtime, the block that he had on Bledsoe to seal the game, uh, the game in Memphis on, on the road that, you know, when he just went off in, in the fourth quarter, the game against Lakers, even though we lost that game against the Lakers in overtime, you know, Rose's impact was, was felt on this team. And uh, even game three against the Hawks, yes, it was a series that we were severely outmanned, but game two and game three, he really stepped up, man. Dropped 30 points in game three and left it all on the line. Ideally, he's a backup for us. But at this point, we, we just need a body right now, man, because yeah. the options are, are looking slim. So I would definitely want to keep Rose. Now, second on the list, Taj, um, I would bring him in if he's like the third, the third string center. I don't think Sims will be on the main roster to start the season. I think you may see him on a two-way in the G League. I would bring Taj as like the third back up if anything I think I thought he gave us some some nice minutes there at the four and the five a veteran presence I felt like he and Rose really gave this team a lift the young guys really rallied around him I would bring Taj back on a cheap deal as as a third backup and I, I think that that's what he would get I don't think there's there's much demand in the league for his services Nerlens while I don't know how much he's gonna get I think he will could get like a two or three year deal elsewhere, and I just don't think the Knicks are going to invest in that based on their priorities for this summer and next. I just don't think they're going to invest multiple years in a backup center. 
I think ideally they'll be looking to give somebody a one-year deal like they did with Nerlens, a one-year cheap deal, and hopefully Mitch can give you uh, uh, some durability during the season where he could actually be your starting center. Bullock, I felt like Bullock took a lot of pressure off of R.J. Barrett and the starting point guard because he took on the toughest assignment every night. You know, people kind of forget that because they, they focus on his offense or lack thereof. But defensively, Bullock really took a lot of pressure off the team by kind of being a wild card. You know, jack of all trades type of deal where sometimes you would guard the one, the two, the three, depending on who it was every night. And you lose him depends on, uh, you know, who you're bringing back. But I think Bullock's defense, while he wasn't shut down by any stretch, he was sharp. And he, and he took a lot of pressure off their guys. Offensively, we saw the impact that, that he and uh, Randall had their chemistry. The three-point shooting really took an uptick, especially in the second half of the season. I thought that was a big part of our run in the second half because Bullock started to shoot the ball a lot more and shoot it well. I think he may go to the Lakers, man. I, th- I think he'll get a, a, a deal somewhere else, and, and I think he yeah. could be a likely candidate to walk. So I would cut him. If they did bring him back, I'd like to see him come off the bench. Burks... Erratic, but a shot creator. And you can never use enough shot creation on this team. And I thought he was another guy that, in a pinch, when sometimes you didn't know what you were getting out of RJ, you could use Burks off the bench as a reliable bucket getter. You know, you didn't know what you were going to get from IQ sometimes. Burks was that guy, you know, and, and, and there were several fourth quarters where he came up big for this team. The one against Sacramento, he had like 18 points in the fourth quarter. Burks had some big games. The game in New Orleans, they had some monster games this season. Game one of the playoffs, great game. Now, he didn't show up for the rest, and like I said, he's very erratic. Defense can be erratic at times, but one thing you can count on with Burks, he can get, get you to the free throw line. He's going to draw contact. He continues to do that well as he has in the past, and he can shoot the three fairly well. And and so I think from a shot creation standpoint, my keeps on this right now, hard keeps would be D. Rose and Alec Burks. Hard keeps would be D. Rose and and Alec Burks. All right, on the second slate, I think think we'll we'll get through these fairly quick. (laughs) Uh, So Frank is already gone tentatively. You have Peyton gone. Uh, Jared Harper, he can go. Pell is gone. I'm bringing back Theo, man. I'm bringing back Theo. Yeah, for sure. Even Absolutely. though, you know what I mean? The numbers weren't there. He didn't play. But I think there's a lot to be said about locker room presence. And Theo was that guy. He was. He Sometimes he'd be more active on, on the sidelines than Tibbs. You know, the kid The kid never sat down, man. And, and the, the, the team loved him. Every man loved him on that team. I'd be interested to see if they bring Benson back on some sort of veteran deal. But that that's my keep of, of this slate right here. Everybody else can go for me. Uh, CK, how about you, man? That stat line is so disrespectful. It's going to be yeah, difficult. Yeah. <laughs> this, 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 we didn't know what else to put. Analysis, Shout out to CK. Dave. Shout out to Dave for putting this together. We didn't know what else to put for Pinson, man. <laughs> we had to put something in there, bro. Some numbers. <laughs> oh crazy. man yeah no no i ain't gonna waste none of your time yeah. I, look i love the jared harper pickup you, you know it, it always reminds me of the summer league game that we got to see cp when we uh when we were playing against him you know so just yeah. the fact that we had him on our side it was cool to have that insurance and never really panned out but uh yeah we all know the answer to this i'm 100 with you i would sign theo pinson to a, a 10 year 10 million dollar deal if i could <laughs> as no cap oh, I would man, do it. giving him a lifetime contract La- right i would do it i would do it man i would have him uh pass what was his name um, um udonis haslam and the heat and make him the longest tenured basketball player in the history of the nba <laughs> i would do it for sure um but other than that you know jared harper was great but uh, in, yeah. you know i think we we got a good one induced so i don't know yeah, if we really we'll need his help uh, in depth at the point and um you know, appreciate you six, but uh, we'll see who's next. That's it. Yeah. Did you, Alex, anything to add to that? No, I think you guys are both on it. Yeah. Theo Pinson. Long live Theo Pinson, man. Yeah. Uh, yes, bring sir. him back. That energy is just infectious. You saw everyone getting along. even, And you just saw how he was just cheering on his teammates from close and afar, whether it's through IG, Twitter, whatnot. He's always just, like, hyping everybody up. And that that can't go unrecognized. I know we were joking about it whenever when – Trier got cut, and then you're bringing Theo Pinson. You're like, what are we doing here? And then you watch and see what he's doing. You're like, oh, okay. And then you see how everyone's just, just the the energy is just different when he's just around everybody. Just even Julius Randle, like he was type of Julius Randle all the time. So you definitely got to bring him back. That's that's definitely needed in the locker room. JD, this list is depressing, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the B list, man. <laughs> 
this, 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 this was the meme oh. list. This was the uh, meme list, man. Theo Pinson, you bring him back. Um, I do think that when you look around teams and and bench around the NBA, you don't you don't really notice enough. It sounds funny, but cheerleading, and he he he's the prime example of just a great teammate that just yeah. has energy. You need that on the road. You need that in tough times, and he provides that. And everyone likes him. Like everybody likes him. Um, you saw what he did with the Nets, and so I would bring him back. Every, Maybe Pell late in the season, if you yeah. can't find a backup, right. you know, he did come in and he did provide some solid minutes um, when needed. He's yeah. a shot blocker. Tibbs <laughs> likes that. And for Peyton, man, I just hope he finds a role in the NBA. I, I, it's going to be difficult, I think, for him to find. I don't know, man. He, he, this is an offensive league and, you know, maybe on a contending team. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's what I say. There's definitely going to be a contending team contender. that can take him to be the third, maybe even second. I feel like we, we, we're we very critical, as we should have been. But, yeah. And you're, you're right. You know, his offense is very, is not there. But you never know if with, uh, you know, re-energized hope, you know, uh, being the second string, third string point guard on, like you mentioned, a contending team. Like, there's a lot of teams that need that depth, at point guard. You know, I know last season it wasn't there, but the season before this dude was averaging around seven assists a game. You know, Clippers could use something like that. I, I feel like he's going to get a spot. It's just he's not a star in the league. We need that, and it's just his time is up. Yeah. I, I feel like he'll get a spot, though. Oh, guys, also, we saw oh, Jeff Teague in the league getting some minutes, all right? I'm saying, yeah. Jeff, World chip. champion Jeff Teague. Jeff Teague. Just World also, champion Jeff also Teague. real quick, CP, I yeah. did read somewhere, I can't, can't Sourcey, I can't remember. I did read somewhere that Theo Pinson does have future interest in becoming a coach potentially. Yeah, hey, I would. So doubt if it. that is true, then that's another reason why you would want someone right. like that on your team. Because if he's thinking that way, then we don't know what type of information or intel um, he's given. You know, his teammates in terms of pointers on what he sees out on the court. Yeah. So if that is true, definitely something that you want around your team. I wouldn't doubt it. 